Nacho Upgrade upgraded his Nacho computer. Okay, I don't know if that really makes any sense, but I made an effort. So I get two points for an effort and minus one point for failing miserably at landing that punchline. Today's video was brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. So Nacho came in and he gave us a comment and said, Happy New Year, thank you. Just want to thank you both for all the advice. I finally upgraded from a Ryzen 5 3600 and an RTX 2060 to an i9-10900F with the Z590 instead of the B560, good choice, and an RTX 3060 Ti. And now I want to upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM and two terabyte SSD. And so it begins. So the principle here that I wanted to talk about is the fact that I think a lot of people who might be watching this video would say, well, that's nice, but a Ryzen 5 3600 is a great CPU. An RTX 2060 is a great CPU. What's going on here? I mean, that's fine, but who cares? Now, first of all, those are true statements. There are plenty of people who watch us who would love to upgrade to a 3600 That's and upgrade true. to a 2060. 60. How many people are using an RX 470 or 480 or worse, a 460, yep. or maybe a, a GTX 960 or 970, and they I've hear 2060, and they go, Ooh. oh my, that would be such an epic upgrade, I can't afford it. And that's those are all true statements. Here's the thing. It's very easy to get used to whatever you have. And you can adapt your use case. A, an i5-6400 or an FX-8300 and an RX-580 or a GTX-1060 will absolutely play games and browse the web and watch YouTube videos. And I'm sure there's tons and tons of people who have that and they go, it's fine. It does what I need. Everything's great. And they look at an RX, uh, they look at a Ryzen 5 3600 and an RTX 2060 go, wow, that would just be like crazy. And here's a guy who went from that to an i9-10900 10-core 20-thread Comet Lake chip, and he went to a 3060 Ti, and now he wants to upgrade some more. Once you upgrade i think if you make a big enough upgrade to get a wow moment and too many people make small upgrades they, they do these little like somebody would go from a 3600 to a 5600x which is an upgrade but it's not going to blow your skirt up they would go from a 2060 to a 3060 which also isn't going to blow your skirt up a 20 a 3060 ti is faster than a 3060 than you would think because they're not the same chip a 3060 ti is a slightly cut down 3070, whereas the 3060 is a completely different chip. Mm -hmm. And even though it has more VRAM, there is a much bigger performance gap between a 3060 and a 3060 Ti than a 3060 Ti and a 3070. So his GPU is easily more than 50% faster. So if he was previously playing games at 40 frames per second, now he's playing games at 60 to 70 frames per second, which at those numbers is, di is a difference. Like going from 100 to 140 is not a big difference, but going from 40 to 60 is. Correct. But now he wants to upgrade his RAM, and now he wants to upgrade his SSD. And you know what he's going to want next? A monitor upgrade, because his 24-inch 1080p monitor sucks, and he's going to get a 34-inch ultra-wide, and then he's going to discover that his 3060 Ti isn't he's adequate. Like, and he's good at, now he's going to do 3090. And then he needs a new power supply. And then he need you know... It's interesting because your computer's fine till it isn't. And I would like to turn this over to Rogue for a minute because I would like her to share her experience of going from a Ryzen 7 1700X Ooh, yes. to a 3700X back to a 1700X. Ooh. My fault. I stole it. Forward to a 3600, uh, actually 3600X. Yes. And then finally to a 10850K. You have the floor. I have the floor. <laughs> yes. So first 1700X, you went to a 3600X. It was nice. Yeah. You, you noticed the difference. 
Did you notice the difference more going from a 1700X to the 3700X? Or did you notice the difference more when I took that chip out and put the 1700X back? Both. Everything just worked great and flawlessly and zippy and snappy and everything downloaded when I went to the 3700X because I was streaming too. And then when it went away, it was like, oh, I had to wait for everything. It was terrible. I didn't tell her I was doing it. Oh, I, no. I remember going, something's wrong here. Well, I needed the 3700X for benchmarking, so I just, I just figured I'd pull it out for a bit. I got near full. <laughs> you hated that. Oh, that was terrible. That, yeah. Well, I tried dropping a 2600 six-core Zen Plus in there to help, but you were like, no. Give no. me my damn chip back. Yep. You eventually got it back. I, I did. And now I've got my 10850K and it's like, Wah. Do you want to go back to a... I'm going to sleep outside in the 20 degree <laughs> weather. You think your computer's fine until you upgrade. How about when you went from a standard monitor to your new ultra wide that you have? What about it? Well, you didn't think the ultra wide was necessary. I mean, sure, it's fine, but like what... And the curved... You thought the curved ultra wide yeah. was like pointless. Yeah. No. You know, it's interesting. If you've never used a curved monitor, and especially an ultra wide, the extra real estate when you're playing a game comes in really handy. And then if you are multitasking, you can pull two things up and put them side by side, which I often do because if I'm writing a script or if I'm pulling articles, like I did that today, I actually had, I've got my. 27 inch over here and then my 34 inch here I actually used all the real estate for today's stream so you you weren't asking for it but you'd miss it if I took it away now yes and that's the point because that I'm trying to make I've adapted my Nacho, use case Nacho was used to a 3600 and plenty of our viewers are used to it and I get a lot of pushback from people going tech you're constantly telling people sure go big buy expensive buy top of the line not everybody needs that no, they don't, but that doesn't make it useless. There's a difference between what you basically need, like the minimum required to physically function, like car. If you need to drive somewhere, you need car. A, a base model Toyota Corolla meets the objective of car. A Nissan Sentra stripped with cloth seats and no features and manual crank windows is car. We'll get you from A to B. It will get you from A to B, but a little bit more money can be really nice and then once you've got leather seats and power windows and remote start and, and a convertible top then it's really fun how much do you like the fact that you don't have to get the key fob out to unlock the doors you just put your hand in oh. the handle and it just unlocks so nice yeah and when that goes away it's like Whoa. do you remember our old tahoe where you had to manually lift the lift oh, gate i remember and you had to take you out take the, the lift gate for granted oh yeah imagine if you went back to having no. a manual lift gate no but you didn't know you needed it and until you got it. And also the windows, the side mirrors. Oh, yeah, the power Like folding. when we were driving over here today, the sun was right in that side mirror coming right in my eyes. And I said to Tech, can you make the windows do their thing? And so he pressed the button and they turned in. You can't do that if you don't have the magic mirrors. You don't need it, but it's nice. Oh my gosh, so nice. Now, tell everybody about when I upgraded you from a budget DRAM-less SSD to a premium DRAM buffered SSD. Oh my gosh. Over here when I was streaming, we had that crap DRAM-less SSD, uh, updating games, updating OBS, updating Stream Deck. I mean... It was just horrible. I mean, it got so bad, I just didn't want to even use the... I couldn't use the computer. And I replaced... It was an SX6000 from ADATA, TLC, but DRAMless and a very budget drive. And I replaced it with an ADATA SX8200 Pro and um, a big difference? Oh, massive difference. If you went back, would you just not want to use your computer? No. I, I, no. But how many people hear us say this... And they're like, but that drives $10 less. How much do you have to hate yourself to save that 10 bucks? Yeah, and you're going to have a cold shower every day too. 
Technically, you don't need hot water. Oh my gosh. You try and have a cold shower. Flushing toilets are overrated. We could use it out. We could use, <laughs> dig a hole outside with an outhouse. Oh my gosh. No, I mean, it's so Nacho upgraded from a computer that plenty of people would say is a great machine. And, and it is. But now he already wants to do new upgrades. And I, I really think people need to separate need versus oh, nice to have and nicer to have. Because at some point, it's all shades of improvement. Does everybody need an i9 or a Ryzen 9? No. But it's nice to have and you will grow into it and it will last longer. Do you need 32 or 64 gigs of RAM? Not everybody, but it's nice to have. Are programs getting smaller? No. Uh, is Windows using less memory? No. Is the next release of Chrome and the next release of Windows and the next release of games going to use less computer resources than this generation? No. So if you have, if you overbuy by a bit, I'm not suggesting everybody needs a Threadripper. There is a point of diminishing returns. A Rolls Royce is just a luxury product for rich people, but... Alexis is a very nice Toyota with better service and, a, and better materials. If you can afford to buy a Ryzen 9 instead of a Ryzen 7, if you can afford to buy an i9 instead of a, a, an i7, you not only buy a better experience, but you buy longevity. Correct. You push off into the future when you need to upgrade. And you get a... Especially if you spend hours in front of your computer every day, what's the cost per hour to have a nice computer? Really? It's like buying cheap beds. Should people buy cheap beds? Used underwear. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Let's not. You know what? I hope nobody's that broke. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. Okay. Well, hopefully some of you found that interesting and informative and maybe gave you something to think about. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs. 